The first thing that I want us to understand comes from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Ready? The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. Here's the first principle I want you to understand. We're going to change that from honest price, and we're going to put that honest profits. Honest profits. If we're going to be in a marketplace, and if we're going to understand how financial principles work, we need to understand honest profits, okay? Because the Lord detests dishonest scales, but he finds accurate weights that find favor with him. What, what does that mean? Have, have any of you guys seen this meme? It's, I, I don't know who put it out there, but somebody who, like, does something that we probably never, ever thought about. Anybody buy chicken or meats from, from local grocery stores? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. I'm, I know some of you guys are vegan. That's not what I'm saying. Whatever. But, but some of you guys who buy, who buy meats from the local grocery stores, right? What, what do you look at, right? You look at the price, and they, and they sell you on what? The pound for price, right? Have you ever thought to weigh what you've gotten? You ever thought to weigh it? No, you just take it for granted, yes or no. Well, this person took her meat, and it said whatever, however many pounds it was, okay? And she went to the cash register, and she said, could you please weigh that for me? And it turned to be that the ticket label that was on the meat was higher in weight than what the meat actually was. Do you guys get it? It's called dishonest scales, right? Nobody, none of us ever think to really double weigh our meat, yes or no. When we buy our food, all you guys are going to be like, oh, man. Now I'm going to weigh it now. I'm going to check that now, right? But, but that's an illustration of dishonest scales, okay? Uh, where, where we, let me put it a different way. And, and again, some of this may sound like common sense, but your train might be off the track, okay? Here's the reality. Don't be a cheat. God in his scripture gives us financial principles in the marketplace, and we have to learn don't be a cheat, okay? Here's another example that we can relate to in South Florida. We haven't had a hurricane in a while. However, what happens when hurricanes happen? Price gouging. See, the law had to govern what the people of God would not establish. Because several years ago, we had to institute a law that says you can't price gouge. In times of emergency, you can't raise prices to a certain level. It's against the law. It is a shame that the government has to establish what the people of God should be establishing in the marketplace. Because people look at it and say, oh, let me make more of a profit. God says he likes honest profits or honest earnings. Proverbs 31, or excuse me, 13, 11. Proverbs 13, 11. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Last week in the family, or, or the week before that, in the finance in the family, we talked about the fact of the principle, slow and steady. How many of you guys remember that principle? All of us want the next get-rich-quick scheme, and many of us have fallen prey to a scheme such as that, myself included, in our past. And, and the scripture tells us very clearly that dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money by little, little by little, will make it grow. There's a principle in Scripture that slow and steady is valuable, okay? And we need to learn to, to walk in that financial principle. Here's the next principle that you need to understand. It comes from Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. I'm sending you out like sheep among the wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Here's the principle I want you to get. Know the game without changing your nature. In this scripture, he tells us something very interesting. He tells us to be as shrewd as snakes. Or in another version, it tells us to be as astute as the serpent. For most of us, when we think about snakes or we think about serpents in the sense of a biblical context, we immediately go back to the Garden of Eden and we think, oh, the serpent was slick. He was a deceiver, Right? Isn't that what we think about when we read the scripture? So, so how could God be telling us to be as shrewd as a snake? Because that doesn't jive. Are you trying to tell me I got to be like Satan in the marketplace? No. 
He's telling us this principle that, that I got the revelation on, and that is you have to put it back up. He said you have to know the game. Put that verse back up in the principle, please. You have to know the game without changing your nature. Look what he says. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. What is our nature? We are innocent as doves. But how are we supposed to know the game? By being shrewd as snakes. Have you ever been involved in a business deal or in a negotiation where you got outmaneuvered? Anybody? Ever? Where you like, you thought you had it and, and you thought you had the upper leg just to find out you, you, you got swept out. Have you ever had, and, and, and maybe I'm talking to a different crowd, I don't know, but have you ever had a business idea that you thought was a great idea and somebody else thought it was a great idea and they says, oh, no, it's great, and then they launched your idea? Anybody? I don't know, maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd. I'm, I'm just saying. See, the problem is God never created for us to be taken advantage of. That's why he put it in scripture, this principle that we got to draw out. And by the way, every one of these principles can absolutely independently be a complete master class unto itself. I just want to give us some of the stuff here to help us out a little bit. This is not by any way, shape, or form exhaustive by any means. But you got to know the game without changing your character. If you're going to establish kingdom culture in a worldly marketplace, you better know the game and not change your culture. You got to be as shrewd as a snake. You got to know how the snakes are thinking, but don't change your character. Be innocent as a dove. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to know how to play the game in an honest way. Tell me, why would God not favor somebody who follows his principle? That's something you got to settle in your own heart because some of us have been cheating for way too long. Next point, Proverbs 21, verse 5. I got a lot of them to go through, so hopefully you're taking down the scriptures and taking down the, the principles. If you're not taking down the principles and you are in finance or in the workplace or have a desire to be in business, let me, can I just lovingly confront you for a second? What are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? If God has given you nuggets on how to successfully handle finances in the marketplace and you want to be a businessman, why are you not taking notes? Are you hearing me? I, I've, I've, close your eyes. I need to pray real quick because I feel in the spirit that I need to pray. I don't know who it's for, but if it's for you, it may be for you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for I don't always confront from the pulpit, but I will confront today, Lord Jesus. Father, I come right now against any spirit of pride and any, t any attitude of knowing it all right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that we would be humble and open to receive your word and to receive your truth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can I just tell you, on Friday, I was at a financial conference. It was where market, marketplace meets, or ministry meets the marketplace. It was specifically for those that, that flow uh, in, in marketplace and, and in ministry. Uh, and, it, and if there's something, this is not in my notes. I, I just, I got to tell you this right now. Sometimes we think we know so much, and you don't know what you don't know. And for you to think that you know all that there is to know, there is no greater positioning or posturing of pride than that. If I showed you my notes from that thing, one of the things that God spoke to me, it wasn't even spoken from, 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 from stage, it's just what God spoke to me. He says, I renew myself to, I resolve to know nothing. If there's something that we need to learn when we come before the Lord is that we need to resolve to know nothing. Because if you resolve to know something or if you resolve to know everything, then you can't be taught anything. And that's a problem. You hear what I'm saying? So if there's something that I might encourage you guys today is to resolve to know nothing. And I'm, I'm a decently intelligent guy. But I have to resolve to know nothing if I'm to get the wisdom that God wants to give to me. Are you hearing me? I don't care how smart you think you are. God will always be smarter. Amen? All right. So... Know the game without changing your nature. Understand what has to happen. Understand how they play this thing. But never compromise who you are. Here's the next point. 
comes from Proverbs 21.5. Again, these are nuggets. You better be writing them down. Otherwise, what are we doing? Proverbs 21.5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Many of us have lost money because we have hastily jumped into a matter, myself included. It was not until later on in life that I started realizing, God, I got a little bit more diligent about a matter. Because the plans of the diligent lead to what? To profit. God's calling us to be diligent. So what do we need to do? Here's the principle. Exercise diligence in each move. What does that mean as you're moving through the marketplace? You, you have to do your research. Look at market conditions. Do people need what you are trying to offer? The, the business idea that you want to launch, is it actually solving somebody's problem or is it just a passion project that you have? You're hearing me? Because there's passion projects that are great. God put it on your heart to do something with it, okay? But does it add value to other people's lives? I'll get to that back in a second, okay? What problems are you helping people solve for their lives? Okay, you need to be diligent in your research, how many of you guys have ever done something without really investing or without, without investing the time to really analyze what it is? Raise your hand. And those of you guys who have your hands up, how many of you guys lost money in those things? Okay, what does that mean? That means going back to our past teachings, we were unfaithful stewards with that moment because we failed to be diligent. Engine, engine, number nine. <laughs> pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. If we have to, all right? 1 Corinthians 3.8, many of us have messed up in this as well. Again, just regular nuggets. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. Here's the principle that God gave me here is that we need to seek complementary partnerships. In business, you need to seek complementary partnership. Here we have two people. We have one who's planting and one who's watering. Right? If the one who's waters doesn't show up to work that day, what happens to the one who planted? Nothing. If the one who shows up to water shows up to water, but the one who showed up to plant didn't show up to work that day, what, what are they watering? Nothing. Right? In your lives, as you go through your, your, either your businesses or, or those of you guys who are employees or, or supervisors, hire people who will complement what you need. This almost sounds like common sense, but it's not common sense. Some of us will hire because we have a need without getting the person who meets the need. Some of us will hire because we like the personality when their personality is not the job we need to get done. This ain't, a, this ain't a, a, a popularity contest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? In your business, in your workplace, if you know that somebody's not meeting the need, you have an unequal yoke in your workplace. We've got to understand to seek complementary partnerships. You want to be successful in the marketplace. And I realize this might be for different people in different seasons, but if you want to be successful with your finances in the marketplace, you have to seek complementary partnerships partnerships okay a dreamer needs an organizer you can't have all dreamers in a house a dreamer needs an organizer somebody to put things together chart things out right a thinker needs a communicator maybe you could think up all this stuff but you don't know how to speak you don't know how to present it we need strategic and complementary partnerships here's another nugget for you proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 do you see someone skilled in their work? If you're taking notes, underline skilled. They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. Can I, can I say this again? I, I pray you guys get this. Wait, wait, let, let, me put the, the, let me give you the key. More value equals greater skill. In this verse, we see people who are serving kings and people who are serving officials of low rank. What is the difference? It's the level of the skill. If you want to know why you've not yet reached the promotion you're seeking, do me a favor, put some romantic music in the background because I feel like I'm just going to hit a little hard. I at least want to even it up a little bit with some good ministry music there. Can I, can I keep going, guys? 
Because I know this is confrontational. Some of you guys are like, I'm not even in the marketplace yet. Why are you beating me up? Because you will be. You will be. Here's the thing. A lot of times in our culture that is trending more and more into an entitlement mentality, we think we deserve something just because we've been around for a while. Or we think we deserve something because of who we are, where we come from, because the titles and the degrees that we've achieved. It's not godly. That's not what scripture says. He says, do you see someone who is skilled in their work? That person who is skilled in their work, they will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. If you think you are entitled to a promotion, if you think that your business, and myself included, needs to be at another level, you have to ask yourself, what's your skill level? Because more value equals greater skill. You want to serve before kings, you have to learn more. You have to increase your skills. It's a, it's a God principle. It's a God principle. You have to keep learning. Did you guys know that most people will stop reading books after they get out of school? Whether that be high school or college? Most people will never read a book again that educates them on anything. I'm not talking about like... Uh, a romance novel and that garbage. No, I'm, I'm talking about something that edifies you and builds you up. Most people will never read a book again after they get out of school, whether that be high school or college. Meaning, most people will never sit down to study and learn something new. Oh, I don't like reading, Pastor. That's fine. Get on YouTube for something other than what you've been on YouTube for. <laughs> <laughs> 